you crazy mofos. Welcome to another Lefty Live on a Thursday night. How you guys doing tonight? How you doing? How you doing? Looks like we got a we got a bunch of people here. Palmer's already here, channel member. What's up, dog? Sensors here. Knives Our Life is here, channel member. Hello, sir. Ground Fox, Celeste, Fook, Doozle, channel member. What's up? Can't stay tonight. Just popping in to drop a like and say yo. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that very much, sir. He says, have a great life. We shall. We shall. Thank you. Nuts for Knives is here. What's up? Channel member. Ian Coates is here. He's a channel member. Uh, your favorite brand is Spiderco. Okay. Yeah, that's the theme tonight. What's your favorite EDC brand? Just wanted to see what everybody's thoughts were on that. It's hard for me to even have one, so I get it. But I just wanted to see if anybody had answers for that. Real 210 is a channel member. Shout out to you, Kathleen Smith, channel member. How are you? How are you? Uh, if Oh, if anybody didn't hear, OJ is dead. OJ is dead. He died today. Uh, we still don't know if he did it. So, Jim Miller, what's up? How you doing? Channel member, moderator. Ed Harrison, what's up? Channel member, moderator. We got Merso, a channel member, moderator as well. I geared up some folks the other day during a vertical live to help us out. You guys, you guys went right to work. Thank you very much for that. Marco is a channel member. How are you, sir? Alley Cord, Paracord, also a channel member. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Nick Travaglini. What's up, buddy? He's a channel member, too. Paul Mills in the house, also a channel member. You guys rock. You guys rock. Coming out early, too. Kevin Smith and Knives is a channel member. Shout out to you. We got Ting Agostino. How are you? Todd Carr, channel member. What's up, sir? Let's see. Oh, I got your bag of goods. I got to figure out uh, what's what in there. I thought that was Josh's, but I put it all in a bag, so you're good. Uh, see anybody else? Let me get that channel member. What's up, man? How you doing? Drink water, also a channel member. Welcome, thank you guys. All the awesome channel members are here. Shout out to you guys. Uh, you will be up for a sweet giveaway at the end of the month. I am still deciding what it'll be, but it'll be sweet. I know that. I know it'll be sweet. Maybe a premium pony. Premium Pony or that Vanish? I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you want? Kaiser EDC is here. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream. I have a couple of your knives here. I was going to show off some of the new stuff I got in. The Denim Sheepdog with the really cool button looking pivot. I love that. And when I say button, I don't mean push button. Although in the video, I was like, wait, is this a, is this a button pivot thing again? But no, it just looks like a Levi's button. It's pretty cool. I really like that. Great action on that one. I got my favorite of the bunch, the Smolt. This thing is sick. Jonathan Styles design. This is in 3V. Yes, 3V. This would be a beautiful flipper, Kaiser. I would talk to Jonathan about making this a flipper, like right here. Look at that. Bang. Just flip. Bang. Flip. Bang. It would be sick. Very clean design, too. It would be very, very sick as a flipper. Also very, very sick as a fixed blade. I also have the deck hand, which apparently wants to be a flipper. <laughs> I don't know why. I just feel like that. It looks like a flipper tab on there. It's a very pronounced guard, so you're not going to cut yourself, that's for sure. I like this design as well. Very sheep's footy. Obviously meant to be a sailor's knife, and it's got a really nice belt clip. And then we have the ugly duckling. The holder, the haldar, what the hell is this thing called? I always forget the name. Is it on here? Holdra. Sorry. Uh, apparently that is some kind of Viking monster. So, uh, if you play some God of War, you might know about the Holdra. 
Maybe the Holdra has three heads. I think that's the Hydra, but you know. Um, yeah, this one to me is a fugly duckling, but I got to say the action on this is phenomenal. They killed it. Not left-handed, but right-handed. Woo! It fires. I took a little poll on my shorts. I was asking... That sounded wrong. Uh, I was asking yay or nay on this one and a lot of you guys thought it was ugly but if you get it in hand man it, it's good i mean it'll be a good cutter ergonomic and great action so you know it does have some good stuff going for it. i just the blade to handle ratio gets me this thing right here gets me but um you know to each their own as they say uh, which reminds me, I was kind of comparing these two because Bostied sent me a Mayhem, which, oh, RS Chaos, sorry, which, by the way, I did a disassembly right before this, and you can put multi-row skiffs in here. So I have these 16-ball multi-row skiffs in this puppy now, which should be pretty sick. I mean, it's always going to be a guillotine, but I don't know. But anyway, I thought these were kind of comparable. If you're talking about blade to handle ratio, <laughs> they both lack such things. Anyway, Dems the Kaisers. Uh, welcome. That's that's where I was going with that. Welcome, Roman. What's up, dog? How you doing, man? Channel member as well. Loot ten tax. Also, a balling out channel member. He's a lefty's right-hand man channel member, I think it's called. I think I made something stupid like that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to do it fast. You know, I try to move fast. David Von Steinberg. Welcome, sir, channel member. Jay Korskaden is here. What is up, these nuts flickers? <laughs> okay. All right. Spicy. Kathleen wants to know how everybody's doing. I would love to hear that as well. Crew wear is the best. What's up, dude? I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you. Hope you're doing well. Unless you change your name all the time. But uh, yeah, welcome, dude. Good to see you. Channel member, by the way. What is my favorite EDC brand, says nobody listens to Eric. Anything but the James brand. Nice choice, sir. Very nice choice. <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. Pacific Vagabond says, sup, Lefty. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? How you doing? Six string beard EDC. Yo, what's up? David says the riv is sweet. That riv, that riv. What riv? Did I show you a riv? I didn't show you a riv. Um, maybe somebody else said something about a riv. But um, I do have a new riv on the way. So Giant Mouse dropped. Oh, is that what you're talking about? They dropped a new riv, I think, today. They have JG10 and I think Black Micarta. I'm not sure. We'll look it up. But you guys can use my Giant Mouse link. It's down in the description. Or if a moderator wants to throw up the Giant Mouse link, I also have a discount code Lefty EDC, I think. And you get $5 off. Not much, but it's something. You get $5 off your Giant Mouse purchase. But they sent me a JG10 uh, Riv liner lock. So I'm excited to check that out because I just gave away, right? Yeah, I gave it away last week, I think. Oh. Full circle, full circle. My brain is now working. I think David won that. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? So I have a Jade one on the way to check out. Michael Morgan is here. What's up, dude? Metal Mouth Morgan, channel member. L Cap, what's up, dude? What's going on? Also a channel member. Lots of channel members here. I love it. I love it, guys. Craig is here, channel member. Did you get that? Uh, did you get the uh, what's it called? The Griffin, did you get it? Did it live up to your expectations? Your six months of begging, J. 
Jesse Adams, what's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Always good to see you. Channel member as well. Whew. Almost caught up, I swear. Pretty fly. What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, no. Man, I thought I caught up, and then the, the thing jumped. Steve! How are you not a channel member, Steve? What the hell, man? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, I crack myself up. Demonock, channel member, what's up, dude? And Renee Ramon, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, I think I got Jim Miller already. Yes, I did earlier. I did do that. I swears it. I swears it. I swears it, Mr. Frodo. I swears it. Playasaurus. Also a channel member. You know, I should probably just call out the ones that are not channel members. That would be easier. Angelo, what up? Channel member. Twang, dang. Also a channel member. Mark Parks is here. Hi, all, he says. Also channel member. Makuso says pony. Pony, pony, pony. Channel member, by the way. You want the pony? You guys want the pony for the giveaway? All right, all right. You want the pony? Not tonight. Don't get too excited. Giveaway, folks. It's for the members giveaway at the end of the month. I do have something for you here. I do have something. Something, something in there. Ian Coates. What's up, dude? Channel member. Yes, sir. I shaved. It was starting to look a little, I don't know. Just didn't feel right. You know what I mean? Didn't feel right. Didn't feel right. Maddie, what up, dude? Hey, Lefty and everyone here. Way to make an entrance, Maddie. Way to make an entrance. Space Ghost, what up? I've still never held a Kaiser. Shake my head. Yes, sir. You should. You should shake your head, sir. Hey, man. Hey, man. How's it going? Does that ever get old? Nope. Nope. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't get old. Javon, channel member, also a moderator. He says, is this not Neves? Confused. Peace. Out. This is not Neves. This is not Neves. Is Neves on today? I thought he did. Is today Wednesday? Am I stupid? Today's Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. Well, you're dumb. You're dumb. Um, I was going to make a joke tonight with the title. So la last week, was it? Or the week before, I made fun of everybody putting giveaway in their in their live titles. Like, mystery giveaway. 27,000 knife giveaway. And tonight I was going to, I was going to, uh, I was going to put, you could win a car. <laughs> Because apparently they keep upping the stakes. MC giving away. There's only 47 left. I still don't know what that means. I just see the thumbnails. Uh, and it's like mystery giveaway. 27 left. I guess knives. I don't know. And then Neves is giving away a whole collection, apparently. I think he did. Shout out to Neves. So I was going to give away a car. But then uh, Ford... Ford wouldn't answer me. Uh, Chevy wouldn't pick up the phone. I tried calling the Chinese companies, but none of those guys want to work with me. Um, so I couldn't I couldn't get a sponsor to give away a car tonight. Daewoo, unfortunately, is out of business. Otherwise, we probably would have got two. You know? But uh, yeah, so that didn't work out. So I just went with the uh, what's your favorite EDC brand? Mox Fox Hobby says, so much hype for the smolt. Yeah, it's it's really nice, man. I mean, if I carried a fixed blade, I'd be even more excited. And I don't, and I'm excited. So, you know, that means it's good, right? Because <laughs> I know everything about fixed blades. KC Cisco, what's up? Channel member, by the way. What's up, dude? How you doing? I think I got everybody there. I think I got everybody. A to Z, EDC. Favorite brand. That's easy. Skelton Blade Works. Sweet ass blades from a guy with a pretty sweet ass himself. 
All right. All right. Yeah, I like Jim's stuff. The scaphoid was sick, man. I really enjoyed the scaphoid. I saw some people talking shit on the flipper tab. I never had an issue with the flipper tab. Maybe my hand is like just, it's a large. Maybe it's just small enough that it wasn't getting blocked by the flipper tab. Because that was some people's complaint. Um, but I loved it. Uh, tell me about that blade at handle ration. Ration? Ration? The blade to handle ra ration? Why can't I say that? I don't know why. The holes are already sold out. See? That's how good that shit is. Damn. Pole in your shorts. Yeah. <laughs> That's how far back I am. God damn. Hey, B Shady's here. What's up, B Shady? How you doing? Did you get those scales yet? Did you get those scales? Titanium Justin. Also, by the way, B Shady is a channel member. So is Titanium Justin. Shout out to you, brother. Check out his YouTube channel, by the way. Molan Labe. What's up, dude? Also a uh, channel member. The channel members are coming out tonight. I'm telling you. They're coming out in full force. Full force, mofo. Luke goes all in in all he does. Yeah, I thought I thought you had a better saying there, Maddie. It didn't it didn't go too well. What's up, Kevin? And all you crazy knife people. What's up, Billy? How you doing, man? How you doing? You sent me one. Yeah, I figured it out. I figured it out. Derek Tang, I don't know if I got you earlier, channel member. TRMs are great, okay? A lot of TRM fans, I know that. There's a group just full of them. Full of those fans. We are lucky that picking a favorite company is so tough. So many great knives available now. Yep, 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 yep. By the way, Kev has a link tree. Yes, sir. Check out that link tree. You might find something cool on there. I got all types of shit on there. All types of shit. Discount codes. Thomas McDonald is a channel member. Welcome, dude. Hope you're having a good night. Hope you're having a good night, sir. D. Sharon Design. What's up? How's it going? All Steve's extra money goes to lights. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. PNW fun stuff. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Looks like I convinced Steve to join. Not a channel member because I've been on Patreon for three years. Really? Are you still on there? You should cancel that and uh, switch over. Because then I can actually shout you out. You know what I mean? By the way, guys, if you didn't know, I knew this, by the way. I knew this, by the way. Steve has been a loyal Patreon member for three years. I knew that. I knew that because I look at Patreon all the time. Yeah, I never look on there. Sorry. Because you know why? Because I can't ever get on the stupid app. It always, like, it, I don't know why. My password never works, and then I change it, and it doesn't work. And then they flag me for something, and then it's just bullshit. Anyway, dude, yeah, if you could switch over, cancel cancel the Patreon. Any of you guys who are on Patreon, on my Patreon, and can sign up for memberships. I know some people can't figure it out. Um, you should switch because it'll be easier. I'll be able to make it easier to include you in the giveaways, shout you out, shit like that. So that would be my recommendation. But either way, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Steve. I knew that. Totally knew that. Uh, Kristen, what up? <laughs> totally knew it. I swear. I knew. I knew the whole time. <laughs> I'm over here giving them shit. <laughs> That's why I sent you that tritium, dude. That was an apology for what I knew was going to happen tonight. Uh, Neville, what's up, dude? Good to see you. What's up, everyone? Long time no see. How's it going, Kev? It's going well, man. Are you back from India? Channel member, by the way. Shout out to Neville. 
Uh, Kev's only cologne is KPL. Hell yeah. Good smell, by the way. Very good smell. MC never runs out. Yeah, but I swear he always puts something in his uh, thumbnail that says 27 left. I, I'm not sure what that means is all I'm saying. I haven't watched one, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, so I don't care enough, but I always wonder what the hell that means. Neves has 34 knives and a badass case. That's what he's giving away. Did he already give it away? Who won? Oh, it's next week. Okay. Got to gotta milk it, right? How do you get in on the giveaway? I should do that. How do you get in on the giveaway? Uh, we need the G5 jet giveaway. You need to bend and shape that hat, Bill. Hell no, dude. Bama Ninja, what's up, dude? Good to see you. I ain't shaping shit. By the way, we're down to, I think, two hats on the website. So if you guys want one of these beautiful hats, you should go over to DevoKnives.com and pick one up. A couple of you guys last week were like, I'm buying one, and then you never did. You know why? Because I ship them, so I know. <laughs> I know. A couple people bought them, but it was uh, not those people. I'm back. I had to take out my contacts. I hate doing it. It hurts. Really? Uh, what contacts do you have, dude? Because my uh, I went to the eye doctor last week and they switched mine. I have the Bosch and Loam uh, Bio True ones or whatever they're called. And I have the dailies. And um, I was telling them that they kind of sometimes they dry out like by the end of the day or from outside and it's a little windy. Like they get it kind of like they don't hurt, but like my eyes water and shit. And I've had them for a year now, so it's definitely gotten better, but it still does that. And so they changed it to, um, fuck, what are they called? They're Alcon. Uh, it's like Premier One or something one. And um, I put them in. They gave me a set at the at the office to try. And um, I'm waiting now for the trial and the and the year, uh, you know, whatever you call it, the year order. And um, I went to take them out just to switch back to my other ones because the ones they gave me weren't the exact prescription. They were just to see how they feel. And I couldn't get it out. I was like trying really hard. I just couldn't get it out. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I Googled it and there was a whole Reddit thread about these contacts and how people cannot get them out of their eye. And this one dude went to the fucking clinic to the, uh, why can't I think tonight to the, uh, you know, whatever fucking Jesus, uh, like CVS clinic or whatever. And, um, they had to do all this shit to get him out of his eyes. He said he had like a suction cup stuck to, stuck to his eye. They like try to rinse for like, 10 minutes on each eye like they tried all this shit and eventually a doctor went in with tweezers and like got them out precision one maybe so i was all freaked out reading that after i couldn't get them out because they were just so slick like i went to grab them and they're just slick as shit i usually just go like this pinch it out and uh and then one of the, there was like people giving tips on it. They were like, you just put your nail and like lift up an edge. And I'm like, I'm not sticking my nail in my fucking eyeball. And uh, one person was like, you just got to go in and you got to push a little harder than you think. Because I'm used to just being able to go Floop, and they pop right out. Right. Um, but once I saw that, I later I tried it and I just pushed on my eyeball a little bit more than I normally do and squeezed and it came right out and I got both of them out. So I think they'll be fine once I get them, but just curious if uh, maybe you have those precision ones or whatever. I'm sure we could probably see and see a car at this point. Dude, no, I'm not a brute guy. Maybe when I was 15 and that was what I got from Christmas from my grandma. <laughs> Yeah, I got a Buick we can talk later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually going to grab a, a Matchbox car from my kid, and I was going to give that away. That was going to be the joke, but uh, I don't know. I never did it. 
Uh, give away a hundred grand like Opie and Anthony did. It was the candy bar. Oh, good idea. Have you seen the new Iron Fly? Nope. Let's see. Do they have a website? They released one knife like four years ago and then never made another knife. So now they have a new one. Wow, what a, how about the worst fucking website ever, dude? You can't even see the damn knife. <laughs> you can't even see the whole knife. What the fuck is this? Come on, Sergio. Get your shit together. Uh, $59. How do I see the fucking knife? All right, hold on. Save image. No, can I just save image? Do I have to save it as? Does it? There we go. Jesus. So here's what it looks like, folks. Ah, it's cool looking. I mean, it's definitely my style. <laughs> definitely my style. Uh, do they have uh, another picture, like closed or something? Wire clip. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's a front flipper. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, G10. Uh, wh what's the steel on this? 14C. So they have 14C and G10. Or is that uh, FRN? 14C and G10 and you're paying, what, 60 bucks? I mean, that's not bad, but they could probably do better. And it's a pre-order? Why are they doing pre-orders? All right. You guys know I like Kun Wu. I just, I don't like the crossbar locks. Um, but I love Kun Wu. Sergio's the man. But uh, what is up with all the fucking pre-orders with these companies? Uh, Kun Wu does pre-orders all the time. Avasti did that Kickstarter. Kaiser was doing a pre-order. I don't know, man. Like, if if we don't have to do pre-orders, you don't, no, those companies do not need to do pre-orders. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of get it. They, maybe they want to gauge interest. But it seems like they just want a sure thing. They just want the money, and then they know that they're selling it. Like, I, I get that. That's why, that's why a lot of people do pre-orders, you know? Uh... Usually, the reason is they need the money. They don't have the funds. But a lot of times, you see people doing pre-orders still. Like Arcane does them. Uh, Noel does pre-orders. Those guys have, I'm pretty sure they have enough money to, to just order runs. Um, but I think they do them because, one, it's nice to just know that you're going to sell X amount. It's nice to have that money up front. So I get it. But at the same time, with, with these overseas companies, I don't really get it. You know? Like, just make the fucking knives and sell them. Like, I'll give Vostid a pass because I really think that people people think Vostid is bigger than they are. I don't think Vostid is a, is a big company right now. I think they have like three or four employees and a small-ass shop. Um, and they're doing super innovative stuff. So they're spending money on R and D, you know what I mean? They're spending money on testing locks and all this shit and that costs money. So, you know, I give Vosti to pass, especially if they're doing a Kickstarter on a knife with a new lock or whatever, right? Like they, they're doing the Kickstarter right now on the, uh, the, uh, Anklio, is it Ankilo? I think it's called. I really like that knife. Um, and I give them a pass for that. It's a brand new lock that is really cool. You know, it's not just like they launched another button lock and they did a pre-order. You know what I mean? Like, it's at least an innovative thing. 
I really, uh, one of the companies I was thinking about with this, what's your favorite EDC brand? Really, Vostid is is becoming one of my favorites. Like they've really turned a corner in my opinion because it, it seemed like early on they came out and it was like, oh, this new company, they got some cool stuff. Um, you know, we got the designer from the Cormorant, you know, this will be cool. And then it was like button lock, button lock, button lock, button lock triple deployment button lock button lock and and then we had the spine whack gate where their button locks were failing and it was like ah oh, shit you know like what's going on here with bostied but then last year they shifted right they came out with the rs chaos they launched the new top lock they're the first people to use the compression lock uh since the patent expired um you know, they just launched the V anchor. I think it's called the V anchor lock on the Ankylo uh, with that cool design. And they have a couple more coming out right now. I think they sent me one that has the the top lock on it, a new design. And I feel like they just keep innovating. Right now, they're doing new shit. They're they're off the ground. I think what they were doing early on was trying to establish the brand and sell knives so that they could afford to move into that shop that I think they're in now. And so they could afford to start putting money into R and D and, and doing these cool new designs and locks and shit. Um, and I think it's working out, you know, but I don't think there's some big company. They're not like Kaiser or we, or, you know, artisan or whatever. Um, so I think we need to give them a little bit of a of leeway on the Kickstarter thing. I, I'm fine with it on that one. And I bet it won't take that long. And they seem really in tune with the community too. So um, anyway, Crispy Critter has been a member for four months, flooding like a mofo here in West Virginia. Damn, dude. Yeah, it keeps looking like it's going to rain here, and then it doesn't. I put out weed and feed on Sunday. It still hasn't rained. It hasn't rained since last Wednesday. It was raining constantly. Now I need the rain, and it's not coming. I need to skip ahead. Sorry, guys. Uh, Blue Minotti has been a member for 15 months. Woohoo! Hell yeah, Blue. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, who is this bald-faced man? Uh, oh, by the way. Uh, member for two months, Palmer Connolly. I want to feel included with the milestone messages too. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you. Uh, going back to JD here. If you guys haven't, go check out his video today where he compared S9EV and Magna Cut and watch it and then come back here and you guys can all apologize who was on the Magna Cut side last week. When Kyle was trying to tell me Magna Cut was the shit and it was better than S90B. Well, guess what? S90B cuts 20 pieces of cardboard better than Magna Cut, motherfucker. What? <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But yeah, check out the video. It was good. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. Blade Shooter is a new channel member. Shout out to you, dude. Much appreciated. Rock and roll, baby. Steve is a new channel member. Shout out to you, brother. And he's been on uh, uh, Patreon for three years. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Neville has been a member for three months. Glad to finally catch a lefty live back from India. See, there you go. Good, good man. Good to see you, brother. Matt Parker's in the house. What up? I'll find one with you. He's looking for my old Rosie. If anybody's got it, let them know. I'm trying to buy that back. Oh, Jim Miller gifting five memberships. Hell yeah, Jimmy boy. Thank you, dude. Cheers to you, sir. Merceau says guilt is a female emotion. Then call me a bitch, because I feel guilty all the time. Uh, I just sold a bunch of knives and lights and shit, because I felt guilty. Because I'm spending, like, all this money on this new deck. And yesterday, I approved uh, 
a quote for a pool heater. So I'm getting a pool heater, heat pump, and uh, a new filter for the pool. And they're going to bury my plumbing that comes out of the pool under this like walkway thing. And then it'll come up on the other side where the pump and the, and the heater will be. So it's going to look way better. And then I have this new deck. So I'm going to spend like probably at least 30 grand on this stuff. So I felt guilty having like these expensive knives and shit. Just like I could just pad the pad the uh, savings account. So that's kind of what I've been doing. And I'm cool with it because I'm really excited to get this sick ass deck and get in that pool and shit. Uh, yes, sir. Finally made it back this past Friday. Man, does it feel good to be back in America? Hell yeah, dude. Talk shit all you guys want on America. But I'm telling you, you leave this country and you're happy when you get back. <laughs> Just something about America, baby. When I initially asked you which to join, you said Patreon because they charge less fees. I said that? I didn't say that. Dude, they didn't have memberships three years ago. So, bullshit. <laughs> maybe back then they had something else. I don't know what they had. Or maybe it just started and I didn't have it yet. I don't know. Have you ever handled an A Purvis Rook? Uh, no, I haven't. That's the one with the big ass front flipper tab, like the thin one. Yeah, it looks cool. Looks cool. I saw the Knife Nuts exclusive one, which looks good. I bet they want your email. Who? I don't know. Who? Got my backspacer for one of my stouts. It looks great. Thank you. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. If you guys missed it, I was uh, selling Stout V1 uh, backspacers for free last week on the live stream. What's up, Josh? Hey, Kev and folks working and lurking. Hell yeah. Love my hat. Those premium tees are lit too. Hell yeah, dude. Check out the swag section on the uh, website, debonives.com, baby. Got my monkey shirt on. Hell yeah, dude. I love that shirt. Uh, we have a new one, too. I don't know if he put it up, but it's like a skull that says Debo. Like a, I don't know how to explain it. But uh, hopefully he puts that up on the site. Eh. He actually made him on accident. They said Blade West 24, and they were supposed to say Blade Texas. Luckily, they didn't make it for Blade Texas, so it worked out. I have a giant melon. Will the hat fit big heads? Um, I mean, how big is your head? <laughs> how big is your head, dude? How big is your head, bro? I can put it around my nose. <laughs> Hi, my name is Justin, and I have a big head. Even though I count my nose as part of my head. I guess it is part of your head, huh? Can I do it as a chin strap? My name. <laughs> my name is Justin. And I am a dominatrix. <laughs> All right. That was weird. How did I have this? Damn it. You ruined my hat. You ruined my hat, Justin, you bastard. Is that wind? Damn. Sounds like crazy out there. I'm trying to, How did I have this shit? Oh, there. I think this is how I had it. This is how I had it? This is how I had it. Nice. All right. I forgive you. I think it'll fit, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't have dailies. The brand is Bausch and Loam Ultra for astigmatism. Okay. I have the astigmatism ones too, dog. But I have the dailies and I highly recommend the dailies, bro, because it's so much easier. You literally just put them in and then at night you take them out, throw them away. Some fucking weirdos use them multiple times. Like they store them and then they use them again. But... They're meant to be dailies, so don't do that. But um, some people are like, I can get 
Three weeks out of one set. Ha ha ha. They're expensive. I pay, you know, you pay like 600 bucks or whatever for a year. Like, it's your fucking eyes, you know? You don't want to fuck your eyes. Yes, urgent care. I'm an idiot. Minute clinic. That's what I was trying to say. I was trying to say minute clinic. But yes, urgent care. Yes, yes, yes. Scariest thing, not being about, not being able to get them out of your eye. Yeah, dude, it was fucking scary. I was all freaking out for a second, reading this shit on Reddit. And then I went and tried it and they came right out. I mean, worst case, you just got to wait for them to get dry and then do it. You know what I mean? A little harder to get out when they're like super slick. I'm just retarded. You're just bad at it. Well, learn, dude. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can watch YouTube videos on it, dude. That's what I did. I learned on YouTube. But I literally just go like this and then I just pinch. You just go to the sides of your uh the sides of your iris. Go like one finger on each side and then just squeeze and your contact will just come right out. Or you can take it, take your finger and just put it on the contact because the contact is in your eye. You can't, you're not going to hurt your eye. And then drag it down to this corner or this corner and just keep dragging it, drag it, drag it, drag it. And it'll just, you can just go like this and it'll come out the side. You can't, like, the contact can't go around your head or in your head. Like, there's a skin there that blocks it. So don't you don't have to be afraid that it's going to, like, go around your eyeball or something. So you just drag it to the corner and keep pulling. That's what I used to do when I first uh, put them in. Shit, I shifted it. Um when I first got them, but then I learned to just pinch and it's so much easier. And then what you got to get is, uh, I get the, uh, I think it's refresh eye drops lubricating or whatever. And I get the digital PF ones or whatever. And then whenever I take them out at night, I put two drops into those to kind of like try to rejuvenate my eye overnight. <sighs> Tanter Neves giveaway. Watch and comment on the video for the giveaway that was posted yesterday. Then click the link in the description and enter your YouTube name and email address at the website to enter. Jesus. Okay. You want to make me do fucking jumping jabs too? Fucking Neves. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, somebody, link, somebody link the giveaway. Somebody link that so people can go over there and uh, enter. That's awesome. Who goes to CVS for medical advice? Well, they have a minute clinic at CVS. You didn't know that? They have an urgent care. All right, I'm skipping ahead. Sorry, skipping ahead again. Maybe they do pre-orders to gauge how much interest there is in a model before they do it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying, but... But you gotta, you gotta just go... You gotta have some balls. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is if we can do things without pre-orders, I feel like any any of these brands can, right? You could just do a run of 300 or a run of 500. You don't have to make 3,000 right away. That's how you gauge interest. And then if people like it and want it, you make more. It's the same concept, except, you know, you're uh, not doing pre-orders. Arc form, just saying. Plus arc forms, just saying. I've never seen an arc form pre-order. So you're saying they're awesome? Is that what you're saying? Sorry. Uh, pre-orders suck. Haven't done one in a couple of years now. Would rather invest money and make interest. I guess. I mean, if it's a knife you want, you know, people aren't looking at it like that. Anyone else only getting notifications for lives after the live is over? Yeah, maybe because it posts as a video after. So it's it's letting you know a new video posted. So what you should do is check your notifications 
So like go to my channel or whatever, click the bell and see what you have checked off. Cause maybe, maybe there's one for lives and there's one for videos and maybe you only have the video one checked off. So after the live, it posts as a video and then it lets you know, you know what I mean? Love the busted. Kubi is starting to become one of my favorites. Uh, Kubi is one of my favorite OEMs. Possibly my favorite OEM. But not my favorite brand. Because I can't even... Other than like a couple budget knives like uh, Collins Royal. And I don't know. I can't even think of any knife that I want that's got Kubi's name on it. You know what I'm saying? But they make a lot of the Devo knives. They make a lot of the Tempest knives. They've made a bunch of stuff. So as an OEM, I love them. I'm a big fan of Bastides too. Awesome. I know you spent about two years getting his lockdown and they had a lot of R&D money tied up in that particular one. That one doesn't bug me. For more established companies, I think pre-orders are lame. Yeah. I took this apart today. The video will post uh, in a couple days. And I know this has been out. They just happened to send me one uh, now. And this is fucking innovative, dude. Like, yes, it's a compression lock, but it's... In my opinion, it's way different than a Spyderco lock. This fucking lock bar is mounted to the backspacer. So, like, you take the backspacer out and the lock bar comes off with it. And then they have a screw that goes through the lock bar into the backspacer at the bottom. And then they have a screw that goes through the lock bar and mounts this uh, button on the other side. It's really fucking cool how they do it. And then the lock bar wedges between the blade and the stop pin, which is obviously held in tightly by the scales. I, I think it's fucking smart. And then you have a great detent on this thing. So you have a real detent ball, a real detent. That's the one thing I appreciate about you. Not you, but you, uh, the guy from Vosteed, is the two locks that he's developed, the top lock and now the V-anchor lock, guess what? They both have fucking detents. They have a detent ball and a detent track and a detent hole, and they feel like detents. And I really appreciate that because I hate spring locks. I hate locks that have coil springs. Uh, and have no detent, right? Or Omega spring. So button locks, axis locks, super locks, Demco shark locks. Uh, what else? What else? The Riot pivot lock that literally is just a redesigned button lock with a shittier, uh, less strength, like less structurally sound design. Uh, what else has a, a, a coil spring lock in it? Like, the 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 axis lock that uh, they use on the narrows, that one's stupid. There's just so many. They all use these stupid coil locks or coil springs. So when I get a knife like this that has a re like really good detent on it, I appreciate it. Now the first time I reviewed this. I didn't review it. I got it. I borrowed it from JD. And then um, I just kind of did a rapid review. I really shot it down pretty quick. And that was because it's a little heavier than I like. And the blade to handle ratio is just wrong. Like it's just yeah. like this thing has 2.9 inches of blade and five and a half extra inches. <laughs> All right, it just doesn't make sense. But after carrying it now for a day and actually giving it a chance, taking it apart, it's super innovative. It's 
really comfortable in the hand and it actually works left-handed really well. Even though that button is right there, it works in the hand really well. I have never depressed that button at all. And you're locking it open like this, right? Again, it's a little too stout for my personal taste. So I'm really excited to try the new one with this lock. But like left-handed, I can reverse flick it. I'm not touching that button. I don't even know where it is right now. But I'm not touching that button. So I get a real deployment. I get a real snappy, crispy feel on that. I can thumb flick it. I can flipper flip it. Like it just feels fun to use left-handed. I have a button, but you know, like you can get out of the way. I wish it had a lefty clip, but other than that, it's, it's really fucking good. So, you know, it's not perfect or anything, but I see why people really like this and I'm glad that I got another chance to check it out. So I'll stop raving about it, but this is the uh, RS Chaos. What I said in my unboxing, I think, is if they make an RS, a Chaos Mini, I think it would be fire. If they made a shorter, slimmer Chaos Mini, I think that would be really, really nice. So that's that knife. Um... Sorry, I just saw this. So, Chuck It, uh, I'm not super familiar with this gentleman, but I believe his name is Charles Hoover, and he is a, a community member. A lot of guys uh, love this guy. I don't know how much interaction I've had with him, and I totally apologize if there's been some that I don't remember. But he got in a motorcycle accident, as I understand it, and he's in the hospital, and Alice has started a GoFundMe for it to raise some money for uh they call him chuck it so if anybody wants to donate to the gofundme uh somebody could put a link in the chat if you would like put the link in there and you guys can uh donate to the hospital fund for chuck it which that's very nice of alice to put that together ali god damn it alice why do i i always never mind anyway very nice of you to do that, Alice. So shout out to Alice and uh, check out this GoFundMe, guys. Um, hopefully he recovers and everything is good to go. Bostied even does a, a solid crossbar lock. Love the dog. Oh, yeah. So that's another thing. I just said I hate those locks, and I do. That's the best one I think I've ever handled. Um, that one in the Bel Air was really good once I put, but I had to put skiffs and springs in it. The dachshund has a really snappy feel and it's titanium. Like it feels like a real knife. Like it feels like a premium knife, like a frame lock or something, but it has a crossbar lock. Where usually crossbar lock knives just feel more budgety in general. At least to me, like I would never spend $300 on a crossbar lock. Because it just feels like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar knife, no matter what you do to it, right? That's why the Maverick never appealed to me. <sighs> S90B is outstanding. I agree. Double D, what's up? Um, Kevin Smith gifted one membership. Shout out to you, dude. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> It's funny. Um, CJRB must be doing the S90V good then. Dude, I'm telling you, this was my argument last week. S90V is one of those steels like 14C where these Chinese companies that are heat treating pretty much everything at 59 to 61, S90V does well in that range. And that is why it's such a good steel for our purposes. Right. And when I say our purposes, I mean Devo. I mean myself as an EDC collector type person, not a hard user. Right. Not a big fixed blade guy, not a machete guy. Right. I'm carrying EDC knives. 
S90B is such a good choice for that. So that's why. Um, just so you guys know, I carried my, I carried the Mayhem or RS Chaos, and I carried my low drag jack in this beautiful Northwoods leatherwork slip. I've been rotating through some jack wolves this week. Um, I had the Javelina on me. I had the um, Cyborg on me. And I had the uh, low drag on me. I love this one. 80s camo carbon. Beautiful walk and talk. This one just has its own style of walk and talk. Interesting. In a really good way. Um, not the most pinchable model, but it's got enough that I can grab it easy. Some people have been known to cut in easy open notches, but I don't need that here. Whoops. <laughs> As I do that, uh, just so you guys know, I'm going to have a video dropping tomorrow on it um, just because Jack Wolf supports the channel a lot by sending review samples every month. Obviously, I love their knives in general. I love their slip joints more than anything. And um, they're having a sale that starts tomorrow. So uh, they're clearing out stock, basically. So there's a spring sale, 20% off of all Jack Wolves, excluding the Gunslinger. So after hours, Jack counts in there if you needed a locking knife. And then any slip joint from Jack Wolf that is currently in stock at a dealer will be 20% off starting tomorrow through the 21st. So that means they're going to be $240 instead of $300. That's a huge difference. So all you guys who have been complaining that it's a $300 knife, it's just too expensive for the materials in general, or you don't have the money or whatever, you know, 60 bucks off. I think that's a really good mark. There's also a uh, dealer called TSA Knives. I saw a video on YouTube, TSA Knives. They're going to have a second sale starting, I think, tomorrow as well. And those are 40% off. So those are going to be like 175 or something, and they're seconds. But I think it's all like small cosmetic stuff. And uh, I think that's a really good opportunity for people who uh, don't want to spend $300. you are almost getting half off on that. So check out TSA Knives. Uh, but yeah, I have a video going up tomorrow where I kind of, what I did was I went through the dealers that I have affiliate links for. And I searched Jack Wolf and I went through the knives that they have. And then I pulled the knife out and I kind of gave my take on the knife. So it was kind of like, I don't know, long-term review slash rapid review slash me shilling knives slash talking about the sale. I mean, honestly, I think it's a win, win, win. Jack Wolf sells knives. The dealers sell knives. You guys get a great deal. And if you use my link, shit, I get involved. But anyway, I carried the uh, low drag today. If you guys want to let me know what you carried, please feel welcome. If I ever catch up to there, I will read it. I'll try. Uh, are we going to get some pool content now? Hey, man, you never know. You might. I was, I was about two seconds away from ordering the pool heater myself and installing it myself and doing all the plumbing and shit but my neighbor like offered to help but i just feel really bad asking people for help and i know i would need a lot of his help he does construction like he knows what he's doing he has a pool he like you know he's done all this i i don't know i just didn't want to do that and so i asked the local pool company i got a quote and i'm you know i'm probably paying like double but It'll just all get done. So there, I could have done some videos if I did it myself. I don't know if I would do that uh, now, but Devo Pool Party. Hey, man, all the local guys are welcome. Come by, bring your kids or whatever. We can hang out, barbecue, go in the pool. Uh, what did I miss, Deck? You selling knives? Yeah, exactly. Alicord Perk. Okay, so here's the GoFundMe again. Oh, you didn't have to donate. Shout out to Alice. 
five bones the GoFundMe for our favorite hot sauce guy. Okay, he makes their hot sauce is up to 7.30. He still needs another surgery for internal titanium. Oh, hell yeah. Is somebody going to anodize that for him? Uh, could we send that out to get milled, get some bark pattern on that shit? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, guys, if you want to donate to that, uh, that would be awesome. My mom, my man, I thought I said my mom. My mom is only half an hour behind the chant. Pretty good. Uh, a purpose rook has a mega soft detent. Hey, you would think with that big ass front flipper that it would have a stronger one. You know, that's the point of a bigger front flipper. So you can get more leverage, meaning you can have a stronger detent, which is nice. Um, measuring tape for Kev's head, Kev's head. Yep, definitely going off the rails, that's for sure. It must have been where I was doing the chin strap thing. Someone asked how big his undies are. You're a dork. You dork. Who's got a sack yeoman? I don't know, but that sounds like some weird shit, dude. I know you're talking about Swiss Army knives, but I'm just kidding. Knives fast, working and lurking. Trying to get this stupid bathroom renovation going a little bit. Yeah, dude, it looked good what you showed me. Looks like you're going to have a standing shower stall thing. You got to get the rain shower, dude. If you need a recommendation, hit me up. I'll show you a link to the one we got. It's so good. The rain shower is baller. I got it on Amazon too. It was like 200 bucks or something. It wasn't that expensive and it works great. It's got the, uh, the built-in uh, valve and all that shit. I could never touch my eyeball, so it gave up after two tries and just accepted my Coke bottles. Yeah, see, I lived 32 years without glasses. And then I got glasses like three or four years ago. I think it was like three years ago. And I wore glasses for like a year and a half because I thought that too. I was like, I'm never going to just, I'm never putting shit in my eye or whatever. And eventually I was like, fuck this, man. I hate glasses. I just don't like the feeling of having the glasses and peripheral. And it just never felt like right to me. Probably because I spent my whole life without them. And so I tried contacts a year ago and dude, greatest thing I ever did. Um, Cause I feel normal again. You know what I mean? And you just got to take them in and out, put drops in occasionally. It's not hard. You get used to it, dude. It took me like, I don't know, took me like a week to get it down. And then you, you get to practice every fucking day. So you get good at it. Um, yeah. And like when I first got them, I think like a month after I got them, I went to Blade Show. You can ask Colin. I was putting drops in like left and right. Um, and now, you know, like once a day, a couple times a day, maybe I'll put drops in if they feel a little dry. Um, so it, you know, they get better and better. I've been wearing contacts since fourth grade. It's like slam, slam and they're in no problem. Dude, did you have like hard ass ones? Cause you, I mean, when you were in fourth grade, it was like the fifties. So they must've had the really hard ones. Were those like uncomfortable? Like, you've been through the whole evolution of contacts, right? Like, that was probably when they created contacts. You would have had them in second grade if they existed. You know what I mean? But you got them in fourth grade when they came out. They were probably, like, this thick, you know? I'm curious what they were like when you first got them. Uh, today is also my sixth day wearing contacts, so I'll get better with time. I do have the... Okay, so here's my recommendation, dude. One, get um, get the Bosch and Loam uh, BioTrue eye drops. Get the one that has the white box or the white label. It's four contacts. They have drops, four contacts, BioTrue. The green box is, it says contact friendly, but the white one is literally four 
contacts and they have a little just eye drop bottle, not the big solution. And what you do is you take that and when you go to put your contacts in in the morning, you just put one drop in each contact, right? So like put it on your finger, put one drop of that in there and then put it in your eye. It feels so good, dude, because it's just like instantly refreshing on your eye and it helps it stick to your eye. So it'll suction in better and then you'll just have like the drop will kind of tear out. Um, and I've noticed when once I started doing that, they felt more comfortable for longer. Right. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to get those drops. They're really good. And you can use them throughout the day, too. Uh, you can also just like chug a glass of water. It'll kind of like refresh your eyes. We talked about all this a year ago when I got them. Everybody gave me tips. So if you need any tips, dude, just let us know. But yeah, get the get the dailies, dude. Fuck that monthly shit or bi-weekly shit. I don't even know why they recommend that. Just get the dailies. Trust me. So much easier. You go on a trip or something... You just bring the contacts. You don't have to bring a case. You don't have to fuck with solution, dude. You don't have to like rinse them every night. You got to do all that shit. Fuck that. You just take them out and throw them. My wife finds them all over the place. <laughs> She's like, I found your contact on the floor in the bedroom. I'm like, I don't know how it got there. I put it in the trash. Like, they just like stick to shit. I don't know. Chef Rocky says F Neves. You still mad at him for using your knife picture as a thumbnail or some shit? Once you break the seal with contacts, they come right out. Been wearing contacts since I was 16. I'm 45 now. Yeah. Uh, looking to get my first machine titanium pen. I'm liking the USG TieScribe V3, but it's impossible to find. Yeah, they don't make those anymore. There was a V3. There was a V2. I don't remember the V3. Uh, what pen are you using? I have an o, o knife or o buy pen or something. And they I don't, they gave it to me like six months ago. And then they never released it. So I don't think I can show it. <laughs> but I have it. It's really good. Um, and then I have a smooth precision pen. I have an Otmog pen. Those are awesome. And then I have a Nautable from Nottingham Tactical. I would actually sell that if you're interested. Um, I think they're like 150. I'd probably sell it for a hundred bucks. It's really nice. The Nada Bolt in titanium. Check it out if you're interested. Hit me up. What up, Ant? How you doing, man? I don't know. We're just we're just talking. Uh, it took me two months. Yeah, it took me a little while to get it right. I still struggle sometimes. I mean, it's just it is what it is. But it's way easier than it was. Um, he says, I got those. What the precision ones? Is that where we're at right now? Skipping ahead, skipping ahead. Is the purple Militol a must have? It's cool. I, I'm not that big on the shiny, polished DLC. A lot of people love it, but whatever. Uh, like hundred percent. I see why people don't and get why they feel like they're the bank, the life company, knife company is using the customer's money risk-free without having to pay interest on loan. Yeah, no, I get it. But I mean, it is what it is, you know, Debo butthole. <laughs> I've used contacts my whole life. I can apply them with my eyes closed. Yeah. Some people can take them out and in like some people could do it like right here. I could probably do it because I can look at the screen. But, like, I can't do it without looking in a mirror. I've tried. Kubi Hyde, yeah, that's one of Collins. I don't I don't love that one. They made it, like, too heavy and flat. I don't know. They could have done better on that. The Tidious is one everybody likes. Because you're a knife hipster, Kev. I don't even know what that means. Uh Dude, unpopular opinion here, but I truly enjoy my Gavco. I wish you had a different experience because I really like mine. Once the lock stick was fixed. Yeah, right. Once you get somebody to fix your custom, it's great. No, I, the one I had, the nurse was sick, dude. I mean, it's thick, but it was great. I loved it. But out of principle, I sold it. Fuck Gavco, but whatever. Um, 
Definitely got some cool designs for sure. Thoughts on the Keenis and Bassett Hound, and are you getting in on the drop this month? So I handled it at Blade West and or uh, Texas, and I really I like it, but it feels a little too much like a custom. It's made by Best Tech, but it's got that like flat, sh not sharp, but like the corner thing. You know how customs just feel like to me. If you're gonna make it on a CNC machine fucking utilize the CNC machine. You can do contour. You can fucking chamfer everything. They, you know, it kind of just feels like a, they just took the custom design and made it a production knife, which is fine. But you're not utilizing everything you can with a CNC machine. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably an unpopular opinion. Also, the way the, way the ergonomics are, for me, I like a choil because I get up close to the blade, right? I choke up close to the blade because that's that's how I use a knife. I don't chop shit. I slice shit. And the way that's designed, when you're holding the knife, you're pretty far away from the actual cutting edge. And I don't like knives where my hand is further away from the cutting edge because maybe my hand eye sucks or whatever. I will just catch the choil and I won't cut paper and shit because, uh, you know, that's what I'm cutting with it. But I don't know. It's a cool looking design, but it's not going to be for me. So there's your answer on that. Uh, Palmer. Kev loves locks with springs. He just won't say it. I just won't say it. Two bones. Thanks. Thanks, Palmer. Fred the Lug. Hey, Fred. How's it going, man? TRM is my favorite brand hand down. All right. Hands down. Shout out to you, dude. Awesome. Not as fast is moronic and ignorant. Huh. That's very interesting, dude. Keenis and Bassett Hound or Purple Militao. It's such a weird, like, thing. Isn't that Bassett Hound going to be, like, $400 anyway? Their pricing is kind of crazy. Um, I would just get the Militao, honestly, but that's me. Yeah, dude, the ratio was killing me at first, but I guess I just got used to it. Or the, the Holdra here, you know? Somehow made the RS Chaos feel better. <laughs> really want to check this knife out. I don't know which one it is, but, uh, yep. Yep, they are good. What is wrong, man? I don't know who you're talking about, but, oh, Casey. I'm exhausted working on home renovations all night, every night after work. Okay. That's why you just pay somebody to do it, man. Sometimes it's worth it. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking about with that pool heater. I was like, I'm going to spend how much time out there working on this, digging holes, setting shit up, fucking it up, redoing it, dragging my neighbor over to help me. I could use that time to work and make money. A, I could use that time to just spend with my family. Why don't I just pay somebody to do it? Like, there's some things where it's like, I'll do it myself, happy to. Like, I like mowing the lawn and taking care of the lawn, even though I could pay somebody to do it, I guess, which would probably save me money considering how much I spend on, like, fucking tools and shit for the yard. But that's something I enjoy kind of spending the time doing. But, like, some stuff, it's like, let's just pay somebody, get it over with. You know what I mean? I just want the shit here. I want it to work. That kind of thing. Anyway, uh, uh, for some reason, the Best Tech Slasher, the larger one, also has a great crossbar lock. They have a larger one of those? The one I handled was like just too small to feel right, you know? Kraken and Spiro have best crossbar locks. Okay, I can see that. 
I hate S90B and wish more knives had light detents. <laughs> the anti lefty ant here. Oh, that's great. Here, there's a big Jack Wolf second sale coming. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier, or yeah, around the time you said that, probably. What is the best Jack Wolf model for pinching open? Uh, I would say the Venom Jack, the Midnight Jack, the Feel Good Jack, uh, all of those, the Sheep's Foot Warren Cliff ones, right? The laid back, because they all have a lot of blades sticking out that you can grab. Uh, speaking of, uh, oh, I was going to grab the uh, Waypoint XL or the Waypoint Large, but it's over there. I'm actually doing a test right now because I had a dude hit me up and he said his Stout V2, he thought had rust on it, like little rust spots. Like it's hard, the pictures, it's hard to tell. He wasn't sure if it was rust and so I'm te I have my Stout V2 out. I mean, I've been carrying it for a long time. I've never had rust. Pro it's Vanex. It shouldn't rust at all. Um, but just to be safe, obviously, I'm going to do some testing. So I have my Waypoint Large. I have my Stout V2 Belt Satin. And I have a Nip Prototype in D2 as like a, you know, baseline. And I just... I went in the bathroom and just put water on all of them. And then they're on top of a wet rag sitting on that box over there. I was just going to leave them overnight just to see. I mean, the Vanex one shouldn't rust at all. I don't even know. The D2 might not even rust with just water, but it's a start. Um, and I talked to Knife Standards because he's used Best Tech Vanex. He's never had one rust. We've never had anybody else say anything. I've never had a problem. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe something just got on his blade and that stuff rusted. Like, I don't know if you were sharpening, he sharpened. So like, I don't know if he, you're sharpening, maybe you could get some sludge or something like could get on the blade and then that could rust. Cause he said it, it, it doesn't have like pitting or anything like that. It just looks like these little spots, but he couldn't clean it off with just like, you know, uh wiping it off so i don't know we're kind of playing it by ear he's he's gonna clean it up and then see how it goes i'm double checking with best tech obviously just to triple confirm it's vanex super clean and not like vanex schmanex from you know uh jim bob's steel shop uh <laughs> um but yeah so it was just weird so anyway, I don't have the uh, the waypoint I would show you, but it's over there being uh, submerged, sort of. Um, but some other new stuff I got in a new Rosecraft. This is the um, shit. What is this called? I think it's just called like a oh Nola Chucky, Nola Chucky, Jack. And I think he said it was just a standard Jack, and it's a little hard for me to pinch. But it's a pretty sweet looking one. Spear point. I think he just said it was like a basic jack pattern. And they're calling this a uh, moss, brown moss, I think. Wood, brown moss bone. Brown moss bone. Moss, brown bone. I don't fucking know. Something with brown moss and bone. And it's sexy as hell, man. It's got this greenish moss color to it. And these are like $60. It's crazy. The Look at the spine. It's just like perfect. The spring, there's no gaps. Like it's all polished perfectly. It all lines up perfectly. You have great walk and talk. Like it, it's wild to me that these are $60. Bucks. Um, they are working on uh, getting a better steel. That's going to be the thing for me. Once they get like 14C or 12C or something, then it'll be awesome. These are D2. Like shit, even if it was 9CR, I mean, if you sold them for 50, 60 bucks, I don't think that's bad at all. 9CR on a traditional like this would be great, I think. Considering people are used to 1095 or whatever. But yeah, 
another really cool one from uh rosecraft and then cjrb sent me their new um bowie pyrite and when they hit me up and they were like we're gonna send you the bowie pyrite it's our new whatever i was like okay but uh, bowie pyrite like you know i love the uh warney pyrite my lefty warney pyrite with the carbon fiber i mean this thing is a shredder just freaking amazing one of the best button locks i mean it's the only button lock that i've bought to keep anyway after i reviewed the one they sent me with g10 i bought this one um but i got this and i was like damn that's it's just sexy look at that blade shape like they went for it on the bowie it's gorgeous and then it has studs and a fuller so you can reverse flick off the fuller and thumb flick off the stud it's perfect great spring it's got some stick i'm gonna do a disassembly i think um but yeah it's really nice and then i was wondering why they did this liner with overlays of titanium thing but then i realized i've been calling them out for doing one-sided inlays on these this is steel which i don't mind at all but they do this one-sided inlay it looks like shit over here so maybe that's why they did the liner thing here so they could get inlays on both sides even though they could do that with the steel but maybe just to get titanium in here i don't know but it looks sick it's got some kind of wood on it i think it's desert ironwood yeah i dig that thing a lot i digs it a lot yeah, dude, I want to check out a ring cone really bad. I still haven't seen one of those. I don't think it's going to be good left-handed, but it just looks so good. That blade shape is just sexy. I'd love to get a chaotic pink one of those. They're all gonna, oh, the Midnights? Uh, I don't know, man. You should look at all the dealers. There's so many dealers, and you'd be surprised. You might find one. Um, and then the other knife that just came in today is from Kershaw. Um, this is what I'm calling the, uh, he's got a Cypher 2 and a small lefty sub and Singo. Nice, dude. This is uh, what I'm calling a redemption knife. This is the Iridium. And I have a, a YouTube short that still gets comments on the Iridium that Casey sent me. And I did not like that knife. It had up and down play. It had side to side play. It was off center. It was in D2 and aluminum and it was 60 bucks. And I just was like, I don't know, man. I, like that seems, I don't know. I just didn't like that one. This one is in 14C, 28N, which is a great improvement in my opinion and it's in aluminum it's 75 bucks but the cool thing about this one first off it has no play in any direction and it is perfectly centered so that's important it has a great spring i don't remember it being this good great action on bearings i assume it easily reverse flickable but the cool thing about this one is the uh milling on the aluminum so this has milling where the topo pattern is you see these rivers those are all actually milled into the aluminum i don't know if you guys can get a good angle on it there you go you see that see how it's milled in i don't think i've ever seen that on a knife before for a topo pattern to be milled like that is amazing it looks fucking cool it feels really good and because they fixed all the action things and like 
uh, detent and side to side up and all that from the one I had. I think it's fucking amazing for 75 bucks. This is a huge win for Kershaw. So really like this one, obviously lefty clip on there. They even have a backspacer made out of uh, white and black G mascus to kind of match it, which is pretty cool. In-house design on this. This is like their, uh, it's kind of like their flagship Duralock model, right? They have, a, I think they have a warning one of these too uh, in this model. And they're coming out with a carbon fiber one with M390. So really digging the Iridium. That came in too today. Get us a code for pool heaters, dude. I wish I had a code, man. I'm fucking spending a fortune on that. Feels natch. And I upgraded too. They were like, oh, for your size pool, like my house came with the pool. It's an above ground pool. It's like 10, 10 or 13,000 gallons, 21 or 24 foot round pool. And I'm having the deck built to extend and go over to the pool. So there's going to be like a pool deck and shit, and then it'll go right into the pool which will feel more like an actual pool than going down the deck and then up some stupid ladder, you know, like that just felt dumb. I just, the way the guy who owned this house did everything made no sense for me with that, but whatever. I think he just bought the pool during COVID. Like, fuck, just give these kids something to do. You know what I mean? They bought a pool and a fucking trampoline, which we got, we obviously had them get rid of the trampoline, but that part of the yard's like destroyed. But I think they were just trying to find shit that, for their kids to do. They had two younger kids, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I'm building it all over. And um, I don't even know. Where the fuck was I going with that? I don't even remember. Oh, the pool heater's expensive. So for, for the size pool I have, they were like, you need this model. It's got 55,000 BTU. It's a heat pump uh, heater. And I was like, well, what's the next one up? Because <laughs> fuck that. So I got the one that's the next one up. It's like double the power. It's like 93,000 BTU. So that should be pretty efficient heating the goddamn pool. More plumbing videos. I still got to do the bidet video. Remember the bidget? My wife thought it was called a bidget. Uh, he'll be in titanium integral. I don't know what that means. Oh, you're talking about Chuck it. Pool party. What's up, John B? Good to see you, man. No rain shower. Too much plumbing work. Ah, you puss. Dude. See, this is why you hire somebody. Because then you get the cool shit. Why would that be more plumbing work? Because of the valve? Because you're just doing hot, cold into the valve. And then, I mean, I guess because you're adding, at least with mine, you're adding the handheld too that goes somewhere else. But, I mean, it's all worth it. Whatever. Really? You're not even going to tell us if they were super hard glass ones when you got them? I can't really wear contacts anymore now that I'm on bifocals. No, they actually make uh, they make progressive lenses, I think they're called, where they can do two things. They have bifocal contacts, dude. Pretty sure. Look into it. They're probably expensive, but... Oh, wait. I've been wearing soft contacts since fourth grade, which was in the late 70s. Really? In 1920, they had soft contacts. What? This is now the lefty glasses and contacts, you know. I would hate wearing glasses. Kathleen says, no, they weren't hard lenses for Casey. He's not that old. But the first ones I had were hard. Damn. Really? Did that suck? I'm just curious. 
I used to wear contacts, then I got LASIK. Best thing I ever done. Yeah, that's another option. But I think with an astigmatism, there's no point because it'll just it'll just come back or it'll just get worse or whatever. You can't beat it. Plus, I heard with LASIK, it fixes your eyes, but then they then they can get worse again, right? And then you got to get LASIK again in 10 years or whatever. Plus, you got lasers in your eyes, but, you know, whatever. And I've heard people have floaters and shit after LASIK. I've heard some horror stories from people in the live stream, I remember. Later, Bama. Use your middle finger to hold the contact. Your pointer finger pulls down your eyelid. Now, I use the pointer finger for the contact. And then I do this. Lift my eye up. And then I pull down with this one, my middle finger, and then pop it in with my index finger. If you have quality glasses, it makes a big difference. I tried contacts for six months and went back. Okay. Yeah, you guys are pussies. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever works for you guys, you know what I mean? You must be rich. I do monthlies because I can't afford the dailies with my insurance. Well, my insurance covers like $200. So my contacts this year that I just went, it was $1,000 for the year. And then my insurance covered like 200. So I paid 798. And then I got a rebate thing that I think is like 300 bucks or 200 bucks. So all said and done, I'll probably pay like 500 bucks or 600 bucks for the year. And when I, at the beginning of the year, when I did my uh, insurance for work, I added 600 bucks into my FSA because I knew I'd be getting contacts. So I added that in. So I got it tax free on the 600. So I don't know. I don't think it's bad to have convenience. I'm one of those people. Like I will pay for convenience depending on the situation. You know what I mean? That's one of them. Um, my eye doctor was like 90 and didn't give me the option between monthly and dailies. I'll see how hard it is to switch. <laughs> that sucks, dude. I can't see a reason why a doctor would give you monthlies over dailies. I mean, they're more, but they're so much better, dude. It's so much easier. Like I have to, my wife has to fucking put them in this thing and you got to rinse them and do all this shit. And it's like, I don't have to do any of that. I just take the, I just get these little, you know, uh, plastic things, tear it off, boom, boom, chuck the packaging away. And then at the end of the night, whoop, boom, in the trash, done. So nice. Dailies are the way I sleep. Uh, what? Dailies are the way I sleep. What? I'm mine for about three days, though. Man, you got to learn how to type, bro. Um, you wear yours for three days? Yeah, see, I don't get that. What's the point of dailies if you're wearing them for multiple days? If you're going to wear them for multiple days, just get the two-week ones or the monthlies and save the money if you're being cheap like that. I, it, it makes no sense to me. The only reason I ever did that was when I first got contacts that mine, were, like my prescription were on back order and I had to order like a month at a time, pay for it out of pocket, which I guess you're kind of doing anyway, but I paid for mo a month at a time out of pocket on top of the year thing I had coming and I would almost run out and then I'd be waiting to see if the, if the uh, order came in. And so I would be down to like one or two and I would use them for a couple of days just to stretch it out. But once I had the order for a year, I just, you know, sometimes I've used two in a day. Like if I took a nap, fucking take them out, throw them away and then grab another one. Like, honestly, I wouldn't mind doing that. Then you get fresh ones in halfway through the day. Fuck yeah. And I never sleep in my contacts. Like, I think maybe I've taken a nap once or twice where I've laid down for like an hour or something. But usually I just take them out, put a new set in. You don't have to worry about that kind of shit. That's the nice thing. You're laying in bed and you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot to take my contacts out. Well, you can just go 
and drop them on the nightstand. You don't have to fucking be like, oh shit, get up. Go fucking deal with this spray and shit. And you probably end up sleeping in them because you just don't even want to deal with it. Um, what did Gavco do? Uh, he was a dick. I don't want to go through it all again. I had customs of his. I sent it to him for lockstick. He kept sending it back saying it was fixed and then it would have lockstick. And then I'd tell him, and then he got like pissed at me because he thought I was causing the lock stick. Um, and then like he was, uh, it was just the whole thing where his customer service sucked balls, basically. And he was like blaming me for the problem with the knife. And literally, I, after all this, I like, so I sent it to him twice and he sends it back twice. All he did was clean it with alcohol and shit and he'd flip it 50 times and be like it's fine there's no stick well i guess he didn't account for the fact that he lives in florida i live in pennsylvania there's some kind of like environmental thing happening where it gets to him and it swells up because it's humid i guess and maybe that's some he made it there so it, it doesn't have stick there i guess it gets here and it's got massive stick and after the second time, I'm like, dude, it's I, I flipped it open. It was fine twice. And then the third time, boom, the stick came back like crazy right out of the package from him. I literally filmed it. And I'm like, dude, it's got stick again. Like, you know, what can I do? I was never a dick about it. Um, and then he just ghosted me. He just stopped answering. This is the maker of the knife that has an issue. You know, there's more to it where, you know, uh, later, but basically he was just a dick and didn't want to fix the problem. I sent that knife to the knife modders. They carbonized the lock face. It never had lock stick again. That was it. It just needed to be carbonized. Um, so anyway. Uh, my favorite EDC brand is Unbearded Gear, otherwise known as Devo Knife. Ah, good one, man. Good one. Thank you. <laughs> ah, what's up, dude? I saw your video today on Survive Knives. Um, uh, I don't know much about that, but that was interesting. I didn't know Magna Cut had any issues, or apparently it doesn't. I don't know. Um, it was like putting a piece of plastic in your eye. My eyes never stopped watering. It was right at the time the soft ones were coming out and I changed over. Why would you, but like, they never stopped watering. Like, what was it worth it to anybody? Like, why was anybody doing it? You know what I mean? Why not just wear glasses if that's the case, you know? If they were super uncomfortable, I wouldn't wear them, you know? Interesting. Hell yeah, man. The x men is fire, dude. That's such a good knife. Don't remind me. 350. Okay. I hate yard work. I don't know. I like it sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's a drag, you know. But I got a John Deere tractor, so I get to sit up on my mower and fucking drive around and then you know, the weed whacking and the push mowing parts suck, but it's just kind of fun to be out there and working. I guess, you know, I don't work all week, you know, slaving away manual labor. If I did, I'd probably be less prone to want to do yard work. But then again, those people are just built up so they can do it. So I don't know. Uh, love my Jim Bob Bennett. <laughs> uh, don't you dare bash Jim Bob's steel shop. Ben X super dirty. Uh, I live on the Nullichucky River in Tennessee. I need that knife. Hell yeah, dude. I don't know when it's releasing exactly. Um... But check it out, traditionalpocketknives.com. 
You can use the code LEFTY10. That'll save you 10% on that puppy. And it is named after the river. What's up, Ron? How's it going, man? Kev finds bone sexy. I got LASIK like 10 years ago. Best thing ever. Oh, really? Never had to... Your vision never got worse again? Because that's what I've heard. But I guess it depends on if you have a slight thing or, you know... Uh, I don't think for astigmatism it's a good idea because it just gets worse again. Uh, would you sell your Silver Fox Devo Buzz? I can't find one anywhere. Um, I don't have a Silver Fox Devo Buzz. I have, uh, mine was the Tux, and then I put Bead Blast knurled scales on it, but it's belt satin. The Silver Fox was stonewashed, just so you know. Um, Knife Center doesn't have them anymore. They're sold out. They just have the black ones now. I don't know what's still out there with the Buzz. I actually have the uh, the mini buzz prototype should be coming in the next couple of weeks from Best Tech. So that'll be interesting. What's up, Mikey? How's it going, man? Good to see you. Shield Arms, what's up, man? Love Bowies and Clip Points, one of my favorite blade shapes. Hell yeah, dude. Steve-O, he'll answer you in eight years. That was close. It was like 20, 20 minutes. And I'm way behind again. I'll skip ahead, all right? I'll skip ahead. Jeez. I still like the Kershaw belly. I love that one, too. That's one of my favorite uh, access locks, too. That's how I built my deck. Another level and around half the pool. Yeah, that's kind of how it'll be. It's not going to be around half the pool. It'll Well, nah. It'll probably be like a quarter of the pool. Just because the way my yard is set up, it, it wouldn't even work that way. But And then there's a staircase. But, yeah. It's going to go up. Like, there's going to be the main deck area. We're extending that five feet, too, out. And then there's going to be a step up and then another step up. And there's a kid's gate. And then a step and a step. And then there's, like, a platform deck area uh, where you can go straight. And then one more step up into the pool. And then to the left, it'll just be like a pool deck where we could probably fit like two or three chairs and hang out and shit when people are in the pool. And then I got like an actual set of stairs with railing to go in the pool. Instead of now, they have, it's just like a fucking ladder. It's just the, you know, whoop, doop, which was so annoying the one time I got in it last year. After we, we moved in in the middle of September, so it just wasn't good timing. And uh, the one time I went in with my daughter, I had to, like, help her up the stairs. And then she's, like, almost fall. She almost fell once. I, like, just caught her when she slipped down. And, like, you know, just shitty for little. And I have another kid on the way now. Um, So I just, you know, that would suck. So having actual stairs where we can just get in be nice. You can you can set it up however you want, but depending on how it's uh how high it is out of the wall, yeah. Like my my rain shower doesn't come out of the ceiling. Mine comes out of the wall, but it's at the top and then it comes out 16 inches and then so it has a 16 inch bar and then the rain shower thing. But it comes out of the the front wall it's not dropping from the ceiling because that would have been a lot more fucking plumbing work so you can have it come out of the front of the wall dude if that's your problem i'll show you the link dude you can take a look at it yourself if you can do it i highly recommend it it's so it's so nice dude the rain shower is the shit it's not you got a shitty one then or whatever. I, mine is 12 or 14 inches. So it's a big like 14 inch or 12 inch square. And then the water just pours out of it. It has, I mean, it has pressure, but it's not, it's not like a jet because it's meant to be a rain shower. 
Like, so it's a different concept. But if I, I'm a pretty big dude, I stand under it, my whole body gets wet and it's constant pressure. It's not like I'm just like actually standing in the rain unless it's like absolutely fucking crazy outside. Like if you have a shitty rain shower, that's one thing. If you had one that's like an eight inch circle, well, that's not going to be as good because you're not covering, you know. I'll do a video in the show. <laughs> I had hard contacts the worst. Like you always have pieces of glass in your eyes because you do. Oh, God. Why Why even do it? Eye doctor said bifocal contacts are super weird because you're not able to point your eye at the different lens parts because they're stuck on your eyes. Yeah, but then they have to work a different way, right? I think they like adjust based on what you're focusing on. You should look into it, dude. It's probably been a while since you looked into it, but or not. Floaters suck big time, pain in the ass. Yeah, exactly. My monthlies last four to six months. You guys suck. I've enjoyed your pool heater and contact lens program. Later, Double D. Why is healthcare so expensive in the U.S.? Because uh, we can actually get healthcare like go to canada dude you gotta wait six months to fucking get anything done and unless you're dying they won't even see you so i don't know the doc might have been a little tough uh, as long as you your numbers off the contact package yeah you can buy them anywhere you need the prescription though um but they're expensive either way. Like I tried that. I was like, oh, they're fucking with me. And I went, I went and it's, they get you the best deal they can. Plus you get the rebate and shit. It's better to just buy the yearly, whether you do it yourself or at the doctor and then try to get the rebate and get your insurance to pay whatever they'll pay. You know, like mine will cover a, a set of glasses or contacts every year, I think. And it's like 200 bucks they're covered. Uh, it's the same process, but instead of the trash, they go in a little case with solution. No, because you have to literally like rinse them off and shit. And then you got to keep that case. And then if you go on a trip or something, you got to like make sure. I don't, it's just stupid. Some contact prescriptions you can't do daily because they can't create a lens for it, to my understanding. I had a similar conversation with my optometrist. I don't know, man. I think they have dailies for everything, but well, whatever. My wife used to wear dailies for weeks and even sleep in it. Ugh. It was fine till it wasn't. One day she woke up with three ulcers in the back of both eyes, almost went blind. Why? First off, why would you... Why would you wear them to sleep? Like It, it literally makes no sense. They're fucking dailies. Like, did she just forget, Terry? Because that's all I could think of. Like, I get the aspect of saving money where you want to keep the dailies for as long as you can because, you know, then you don't have to wear as many over the year and you save money. But if you're going to do that, at least get a case and put the solution and everything in there overnight. Um, but wearing them to sleep is just the stupidest thing you could do. One. It's fucking uncomfortable. I don't want them in my eyes. At the end of the day, I'm like, get these fuckers out of here, right? That's wild. And I don't know how you get the ulcer, I guess, from sleeping in them or from them being dirty. That just, I don't know. That just sounds lazy, Terry. I don't, you know. Yeah, double D tent. I mean, I got to the point where I was like, I was, I didn't realize I needed them until I realized I needed them. And I was like, fuck. Uh, so even with them, man, they're, it's still not like perfect. Although they did change it this year. So hopefully, you know, once I get the new ones, it'll be a little better. And I also think with the stigmatism, 
sometimes the contacts rotate a little bit because they have to, they're weighted. The astigmatism ones are weighted. They have a little line in them. And when you first put them in, it takes, sometimes it takes like 10, 15 minutes for them to get shifted to the right angle. Because literally an astigmatism means your eyeball isn't like perfectly round. So you're seeing things a little fucked up because the whatever the refraction or whatever isn't the same because it's not perfectly round and the contact fixes that axis shit or whatever. So it has to be turned in the right spot. Long story short. And sometimes if you blink too much or whatever, it'll shift them and then it fucks your shit up. And I'll just be like, randomly, I'll be like, wait, what the fuck? Like it's everything got blurry. And then you just have to wait a little bit from the readjust and then everything's fine. So, and then when you first put them in, that takes a second. I don't know if everybody knows that, that has an astigmatism, but. Hell yeah, Ron, thank you. I knew a lady who used to leave them on for weeks and she took them off and it ripped some part of her eye off. She almost went blind and her eyes burned like fire for two weeks. Holy shit, dude. That is wild. Like, that's, I just don't get it. It's literally stupid. My dad is responsible for that. How old are you? That's crazy. Uh, can we see the knife you sent back twice that Maker didn't fix? Can't remember the brand. I don't have any. I sold it. As soon as I could, because I was like, fuck this guy. Um, it's a Gavco Nurse. Gavco Nurse Custom. I can show you what they look like. I didn't realize how late it was. Shit. Uh, my video might even come up, but let's see. So, this is the Nurse Design. The customs are usually non-flippers. That's what mine was. But, yeah, that's, there it is. That's mine right there. I think I sent it to Jake. Yeah, I sent it to Jake. And uh, he reviewed it. Hey, everybody. Jake here from Bearded Gear. Ah, remember Jake's videos? I love Jake. Jakey poo. All right. There it is. That's what it looked like. Dude, so gorgeous. Such a great knife lasted finish um, on his knives a lot. It's really cool to see in person. Uh, I've handled a couple of custom Gavcos in the past. I've never owned one and uh, I've never carried one or used one. So this has been an exciting moment. And I think. I miss Jake's videos. Uh, but anyway, that was the knife. I think I, I shared that, right? I uh, saw a new knife on Stasa's channel that looked badass. Kunwu OEM. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's sending that to me next. Um, I can't even remember the, the brand now, but he reached out to me and was like, Hey, uh, I wanted to get your feedback. Um, yeah. So I think Stas is sending that to me. They do look really good right up my alley, you know, sheep's foot and all that good shit. Looks good. Uh, yep. Long since sold. You guys should have released those knurled scales. Those were sweet. Yeah, I mean, we only had 20 of them. We did drop those. We should have, I mean, had we known what we know now, we would have done the whole run in those knurled skills. It's fucking gorgeous. And it feels great in the hand. So if we ever do the buzz again, full size, we'll do it. I think we did add it to the mini, but the mini is in carbon fiber uh, weave. But I think we did one prototype with the knurling just to see how it would come off. Um, I'd, af I'd be afraid you're going to end up with the pool ending from bad boys. I don't even know what that means. Pool ending. I'm trying to remember. The under They get tangled in a cover or something. Yeah, thank you. I thought I told you guys that. But yeah, October uh, due date. 
We don't know uh, what the gender is yet, so as soon as I know, I'll let you know. TV don't work. Sucker for punishment. I don't know. It might be, man. Might be about context. I just talked to her about a week ago, and she kind of talked me out of it. Oh, okay. I would at least try it, you know, just to see. We need some influencer gossip. I don't know what that means. I don't have any. Oh, you're talking about uh, Javon. Man, it is windy as hell out there. I don't even. You guys might even be able to hear it. I mean, new flashlights or slip joints? Uh, no, I sold some flashlights. That Hanko I showed you last week. I think I showed you last week. It was the last one I got. Uh, I showed you the knives. No new slip joints. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could do the giveaway. Thoughts on straight razors? Don't have an opinion. I don't use one. Don't really want one because I'd kill myself. That kind of thing. Kev just flip off the chat. I don't think so. Did I? Toric lenses. Are those, What are those? The thick ones or are those the bifocal ones? Um, I'm 53 now. Your dad does all the yard work and you're 53. That makes him like 70 something. He still does all the yard work. I have an astigmatism. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends if you have a bad one or not, if it's bad, but if you have contacts for astigmatism, then yeah, you have the ones and they'll have a little line on them. Next time you take them out, look at them in the light. And you'll see like a little line at the bottom. And that's the weight. And that's how it slowly rotates to the weight. I don't think the monthlies would be any different. Um, I don't think they told me that either. I think I found that out on like YouTube. Because I was wondering what the hell that line was on my contacts. I am not a member tomorrow. <laughs> Were you the one trying to figure it out on uh, on uh, on your device last time? That's funny. But uh, the giveaway is not for members this time. Totally forgot about Jake. Yeah, I see him at shows occasionally, which is always good. Thanks, David. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, we're excited. At the end of Bad Boys, the side of the pool, let's go, and Martin goes floating away, unless I'm thinking of a different movie. Oh, I don't know. Best quiet carry, in your opinion? Uh, I would probably say the regular size Waypoint or the G10 Drift, one of the two. I love both, but probably the Waypoint because you get the hollow grind. And you get the, the liner lock with titanium, you know. Um, but yeah, I love those two. Torix are for astigmatism. Okay, gotcha. My dad and I do the yard work. I'm not 53, though. No, he made me do yard work on demand when I was young. Every time I wanted to do something. That's why I hate it. Okay. Sounded like you said he does it, but okay. If it's not too bad, they'll just give you regular lenses if they can. Yeah, but he said astigmatism, so I think he has the astigmatism one. It'll say it on the package. Have you handled the jig tie vampire? Thinking about yes, I did. I did a video on jig tie jack wolves. If you want to check it out. And I'm pretty sure there was a vampire in there. Um, I like the jig tie versions. My favorites are the reverse tucks. I have a midnight. It's the only jig tie one I have is a midnight. Uh, I prefer the carbon ones personally. But they're all good. So yeah, you can't lose on that. I just don't like the screw placement. 
on the vampire. It feels weird to me because it's not symmetric. Um, yeah, the IQ is sick too. I love the IQ. Even the large IQ is awesome. No, I'm not going to name it Devo. We stopped at one boy and one girl. At least then you and the wife aren't outnumbered. Yeah, I don't know. We've been thinking probably just two, but I mean, I could be convinced to have three. Um, but then I'd have to move my office because we'd be out of bedrooms. <laughs> at some point, I want to finish the basement and maybe make that the studio or something. I don't know. I got time for all that. Is Jack Wolf Knives having a sale? Yeah, tomorrow. Starts tomorrow through the 21st. 20% off all the in-stock items at dealers except for Gunslingers. Because they were the last release. Um, all right, let's do the giveaway. I have two things. The first one is a Kubi. A Kube knife. This is the, I think it's called the Cabaral, the Cabaral or something like that. It's a little uh, sheep's footy knife. This is from their uh, D2 sale where they sent me some stuff. So it's D2 and a, it looks kind of like a stonewash bead blast or something. Good detent, studs. Pretty classic uh, budget build. Remember when every budget knife looked like this? G10. And, I mean, they all look the same. Even Civivi, Kubi, Kaiser. I mean, they all looked like that. It was crazy. Anyway, so we have that. And then we have the uh, Raylite Lanapple. So I just did a review on the Lanapple the other day. Check it out. It's a very cool flashlight. Uh, shout out to Blade and Beam. They were the ones who sent this my way. And then they actually, after the review, they told me I could keep it. And I decided I would uh, give it away to you guys. So this is a titanium stonewash tie Raylite Lanapple. And if you win it and you want to know how to program it, well, I got a video on that. But it's got an excellent emitter, very good light, really good EDC light. I think you guys will enjoy this very much. I was surprised at how much I really like this. I didn't think I'd be a Raylite fan after the pineapples I had back in the day, but definitely very good. You could get away with just a Raylite and not spend thousands of dollars on lights. So, no, it's a 14500 Let me get that. And then there's a, a bunch of stickers down here as well. So that'll be the giveaway. And uh, I guess we'll have to do, what, hashtag contacts? <laughs> Hashtag contacts. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do -do. There it is. And uh, again, guys, tomorrow I'll be. I'll be posting uh, two videos, as is customary, pretty much every day for the last th three years. Um, no, four years, three years, four years. I don't know. Anyway, um, in the morning, I'll have the Jack Wolf video I talked about earlier. So I'm going to go through all the dealers that I have affiliate links with, go to their website, see which ones they have in stock still. That'll be on sale tomorrow for 20%. And then I talked about each one of those slip joints. I pulled out my versions of them and just kind of gave my thoughts. So that'll be in the morning. 
I just wanted to put up something about Jack Wolf because they support the channel a lot. And I thought, you know, I should support them too, even when they're not sending me something. Um, and then in the afternoon, I have a fla custom flashlight collection video. So I think I did one of those like two months ago, but there's been a lot of changes since then. And I sold a bunch recently. So there's a lot of them that aren't here anymore. Um, and I think I, I still had the Zerk Hanko when I did that. I sold that yesterday because it's like a $2,000 light. And I just, I don't know. I just feel weird having that much money in one thing. So I sold that. But other than that, I think I still have everything from the video. I literally filmed it like two days ago. So if you guys are interested in the custom flashlights, that'll be the collection video tomorrow. Contacts are my future. Just go to the eye doctor, dude. I had literally never been to an eye doctor and I went last year, not last year, I went three years ago and it was, I mean, it was nice to be able to see well again, you know, and then I wore glasses for, I think a year or two. And then I asked for contact and that was, that's, you should ask right away, honestly. Um, I think it depends on the build. So like we we're doing it on our, uh, nip slip that's coming out, uh, in the next month or two, we have a, a slip joint design. That's a full hollow grind. Um, but on like folding knives, we don't do it because it kind of doesn't look right. If you're doing a hollow grind, you have a hole. Like we always have a hole design. And so it kind of looks better to have the hollow grind kind of line up with the hole at the bottom or the middle or whatever. That would be probably the reason why you don't see it a lot. Um, and I guess it would also reduce the weight of the blade quite a bit. And with a folding knife, you are somewhat considering action. And if you make that blade super light, it won't drop. But I don't know if that's really a, one of the reasons people don't do it. I just, I don't know. It's a good question. But if you meant on just slip joints, I think it's just aesthetic. People don't. I, I love a full height hollow grind. The only place I've seen it other than Jack Wolf uh, is Trevor Berger. He's been doing it forever. Um, his customs are full height hollow grinds and they are fantastic. And I was a little disappointed when urban EDC did the LC and they went with a flat grind. That just seemed weird. Why didn't they do a full hollow to match the customs? Cause it's just, yeah, it's incredible. It makes the acoustics better. It obviously slices way better. It's stupid thin. I think this one's like, I don't know, 11 or 13 thousandths behind the edge or something. You hear that? That was my nail just sliding off of it. I love a full hollow. But like, I don't know. If you think about it, like look at this knife. If you did a full hollow grind on this, wouldn't that look weird? Because you got this hollow here. But if you went all the way up, you wouldn't be able to really do this pattern. You wouldn't have the swedging and stuff. So it's kind of just an aesthetic thing. And you have like a sharp edge up there. So depending on the knife, you know, it makes sense or doesn't, I guess. But I really dig a full hollow. Like here's the premium pony. Take a look at that. Again, I, I don't know. I just think it would 
you wouldn't have you wouldn't be able to do the swedge you wouldn't have this kind of cool little aesthetic touch to it you wouldn't have this different flat and then you have the hole which kind of gives you the reason to cut it off here you know and you still get a really nice thin hollow Dude, I would I would grab one during this sale because they do it like every six months. So it'd be a good time to grab one. And I got to tell you guys, if you haven't handled a jack wolf, you got to handle a jack wolf. That's how you know how good they are. Because every time I have a, a, a little back and forth in the comments with somebody who's like $300 for a Chinese made slip joint. God damn. That's ridiculous. He must be rolling in money. He riding around in that Rolls Royce. Every time I have that conversation with somebody in the comments, I always say, have you handled one? No. Okay. That's why you don't understand. If you handle one, then you get it. You'll notice why it costs what it costs. And if you can get one at 240 right now to experience that, I highly recommend it. And you can use my links, somebody else's links. I don't give a shit. But give it a shot if you have the money and you've been wanting to try a Jack Wolf. Leave the pony stout alone. They're perfect. Love my premium pony. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. 40% uh, off Jack Wolf Blems. I believe that's at TSA Knives. TSA knives. What did I miss? Yeah, dude, I told you like two weeks ago. You don't remember that? We talked about it. Uh, you'll never get one for less than these deals. Yeah, I mean, think about it, dude. 240 for a new one, 175 for the blems. And I've had one of his blems. I think my venom might be a blem. And it literally was like this speck of something somewhere. I can't even remember what the hell it was. Oh, I think it was like this little thing on the titanium. And I took my file and just went on like one thing and it was gone. Like he's super nitpicky. So yeah. Yeah, it was on Patreon. <laughs> Growler is perfect also. Oh, yeah. And the nip. Oh, my God. It's so good. Yeah. Thank you, man. Well, we got more of the nips coming. We got the budget nip, the nip light in production with the fireball and the tall boy. And we'll circle back to the growler. Uh, I talked to Kubi about doing a mini growler. So I got them working on a mini growler because uh, I think that would be fun. I do still want to do a growler with a, a hollow ground. Like a full hollow would be sick on a growler. Yeah, they're fire, dude. Yeah, I don't know. The name is a little iffy, but I messaged him yesterday because I was trying I'm trying to get a certain jack wolf for somebody. They haven't responded. I'm hoping I can get one of their seconds so I can get a good deal on it since I'm trying to just give it to somebody. I'm going to buy all the Devo knives. Hell yeah, Ron. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, Ron, very much. Auto growler. Eh, I'm not an auto guy. I think they're just cosmetic, but I'm pretty sure they will list whatever the issue is. But I'm pretty sure they're cosmetic. If you watch the video from TSA Knives on YouTube they posted yesterday, they say they're fully functional the edges are fine it's just you know it's got to be cosmetic at that point so it's not the action walk and talk and it's not the blade so it's got to be cosmetic right yeah mini growler would be sick wouldn't it yeah it's probably something like that i don't know 
What about a knife named Deuces or 40 or Pint? Could happen. Could happen. We have a couple in prototype right now. We have the Chaser and we have the Bender in prototype phase. And we just, I should say we, but Colin just drew up another one off an idea that I had. And then he changed it a bunch, and it's looking really good. Um, and we have we don't have a name for that one yet, but we'll come up with something. Man, that's really, really tough. So it would depend on what's available, right? If you can get yourself a feel good or a midnight, I really recommend those two if you're into sheep's foot blades. The feel good is different. It's a pen knife. So it's got a really thin handle, but just the way it feels to me, it's my favorite one. Um, but I don't know if those are available. I did, if you watch my video tomorrow, there was a Lehman Cello feel good somewhere. I can't remember which place. The Midnight, there's a lot of those available right now because it was a recent release. And that's one I highly recommend. That's probably right there at the top of my list. Um, Feel Good, Midnight, Venom, which you're not going to find, unfortunately. Venom, unless it's one of these uh, Blems. Uh, Venom is fantastic. The new laid back jack is phenomenal. Uh, the second batch of those, just the way they updated the bolsters and everything changed it for, for me. From one of my least favorite to one of my favorites. The low drag is one of my favorites. Um, it's hard not to recommend. They're all the little bro dude in Flow Party, probably my second favorite, right behind the feel good. Man, they're neck and neck. Um, and maybe maybe the big bro if you don't like if the little bro is too small, but you know. Uh the Jack Wolves are not USA made. No. They are made overseas. I'd like to see Debo do something in full titanium with some cool milling designs. Okay. Have you seen the uh, tall boy? <laughs> have you seen the tall boy? Because it we have a full tie version and it has milling on it. So that might be what you're looking for. Um White Mountain Knives is the only one doing a titanium version of that knife. They're all going to be camo carbon other than that. But he's doing uh, a full tie that is going to be stonewashed tie with a stonewashed S90V blade, blue accents. And that one has the radial pattern, the milling pattern that we did on that knife. So that might be one you want to check out. Um the other knives we're doing right now, waiting on protos. I think one of them is, I think they are full tie actually. So, uh, premium knife. Um, yeah, we actually have two right now that are, uh, two that are in prototype phase or one. And then the new one I just talked about, we kind of just changed to a blade shape that's not a sheep's foot warning. So, yeah, we have some coming. Oh, the Growler. Uh, we're, we're working with um, Chapman Lake. Uh, I haven't heard from them in a while. They said they could do it, so I'm just kind of giving them, you know, leeway. I think they're working on their own thing right now. So, it is what it is. But, yeah. The growler is still in uh, in the works. Still trying to get it done. Hey, Nito, what's going on, man? Forgot about the tall boy. Yeah, that one has milling. And then we had the nip. We did that one in full tie with milling, too. Um, the new nip light, we're not going to have tie. We'll have aluminum, but it'll have the milling pattern on it. And then there's going to be ultim. And a G10. All right. Uh, let's do the giveaway. I got I to gotta go to sleep. Ah, shit. I opened FaceTime. Fucking idiot. FaceTime my mom real quick. Um, all right. 87 entries. 
Here we go. Oh, Rochambeau shows up right at the end. Uh, Roll, did you go see JD's video about S90 versus Magna Cut? S90 putting the beat down on Magna Cut. Nectar of the gods, baby. S90V. Even the buzz, you can still see the milling. There's a little bit of milling on that. You mean the micro milling? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, here we go. 90 entries now. Now you made it. You snuck it in there, uh, whoever that was. T Fudge with the win. You know I'm in the S90. I know you are, dude. That's why that's why I mentioned it. I'm going to give you my email address, tfetch. Shoot me an email with your address. By the way, if anybody was curious, I have been wearing this uh, polished Zerk ring now for, I don't know, was it been a couple weeks? At least a week. And it has absolutely zero scratches or marks or anything on it. Banging into knives, all that shit, just like the Zerkutai one. But this one's not showing any of the wear, which is cool. That was the point. Oh, a D10, man. So good. It's so good. It's so good. Can't believe how much I like this knife now. After... Literally hating on it the first time. And I put multi rows in here. What? Definitely going to pass this one around. I guess I got to see if any of the guys haven't tried this one. It has been around a little bit, but I'd like to pass it around. Sick. What up, Rob? Rob's Nerdy Knives is here, too. Dude, Rob, I've been watching, uh, I've been seeing your, I don't know if they're your shorts, reels, thumbnails, I can't remember. But just like heavy hitter knives after heavy hitter knives. Shiro's, Holtz, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Going down the rabbit hole. Do you need an adult cab? Yes, for sure. Hell yeah, dude. Use that code, baby. Save you 10% on your skips. Dude, you don't even really notice the compound because it's so far back. Um, it's really just the blade to handle ratio that hurts it for me. And then just the sheer, like, you know, girth of the thing. But man, once you get this sucker in your pocket, and you carry it, and you use it. I mean, it's it's slicey, man. They they got it sharp. Uh, I wish it was S90B, not M390, but hey. Uh, it's definitely a very good knife. So I can recommend it for sure. But if you like small or super thin slicey knives, then, you know, this isn't the one. But if you like the PM2 or something, yeah, you'll fucking love this. All right. I got to get to bed, too. So, um, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you for coming out. I uh, love you guys. And uh, I think, do we have a stream Saturday? I think we do. So I'll probably see you suckers on Saturday. And I uh, hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic night. If you have contacts, switch over to dailies. And uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.